Hey everyone, back here I'm with a nice easy video starting with the uh, pace of filters comb paint uh, strainer. But yeah, I've been over to the recycling center uh, thrifting and uh, I thought I'd go through and um, show you what I found. So the first thing in the box, I got a few things and some stuff that's behind me there that you can't see. Sega Rally. And see here uh, seems to be in pretty decent uh, condition uh, what do we got system requirements Windows 95 98 uh, recommended requirements 95 98 Pentium 133 megahertz 16 megabytes of memory or higher 640 by 480 at 16 bit color so yeah not too uh, demanding disc seems to be in decent shape hello uh, two cars the Celica and the um, Lancia Delta Gralo I think it is is that what they call it the Lancia Delta yeah anyway so I found that uh, next some random promo CD that I found. Don't know what's on it. Might have to explore that. Um, .com.au, qvsoftware.com.au, March 2004. So I might need a slightly faster machine to run that on, but you can have a look at that later. Uh, demo, Ground Control 2, Operation Exodus. It's quite interesting. Uh, Pentium 2 for the requirements here. Uh, what have we got? Pentium 2, 800 megahertz CPU. Sorry, Pentium 3. Helps if I read that properly. Uh, Windows 98, 2000 MEXP, 128 megabytes of RAM, DirectX 9. 32 megabyte uh, AGP card. Uh, what have we got? GeForce. Uh, or Radeon, um, yeah, this one looks like a, uh, what do they call it, a real-time uh, strategy uh, sort of game, looks quite interesting from the uh, screenshots here, so we have to check that out too, no idea, once again it's a demo, disc looks to be a, there's a bit of weird stuff happening on the edge here which you might not be able to see it's this ring that goes around I'm not too sure what the deal is with that but we will check that out later uh, another one driver very popular game I've already got this um, but I figured I would pick it up and then um, put it online if anyone wants it um, not looking to make any money off it but um, if anyone wants it they can just pay me a shipping for it uh, in New Zealand and a box of CDRs now these are 10 and unfortunately they are the horrible little thin slimline jobos but verbatim um, always good to have kicking around uh, the other things Got an iron shield for a random motherboard. Um, I thought it went with the board that I picked up because I've got two motherboards, but it is not. All right, this is what we've got in the box. I grabbed a spare um, socket 775 type cooler. Uh, they're getting harder to find. I got a floppy disk drive, which we'll have to take apart and clean and test. Um, three and a half inch and a couple of cables so I have been needing some that support the um, the five and a quarter inch um, floppy disk drive so I got two cables there which are very handy because they're getting hard to find I found another header which goes with some of the other parts that I found um, a really wide, I think it's SCSI. Uh, this is at next to a IDE 
cable, so it is quite a bit wider. So I believe that will be a 50 pin SCSI cable. Uh, and I've got some memory. Um, I believe this could be a DDR2 module. Uh, not too sure. Uh, two gigabytes. Uh, I got a one gigabyte uh, DDR400 um, module. Uh, 512 meg DDR400. DDR RAM is getting a bit harder to find. Um, two gigabytes of DDR2 and the other matching stick of the 512 that I got. So that's a matching pair, so it's one gig, gigabyte. CPUs, I got a few. A uh, Core 2 Duo, oh no, sorry, Core i5 3420 gigahertz, so that's kind of nice third generation i5. Uh, for the, I think it's 1155 or 50 socket. Um, what else have I got here? A Core 2 Duo, SLB 9Z 2.9 gigahertz Costa Rica socket 775 um, CPU uh, another gosh you really can't see this I'm sorry I have to read it even I'm struggling uh, Pentium 4 I think it is yeah Pentium 4 3.20 gigahertz CPU this is a uh, what is this? An SL7J7 model. Uh, one megabyte of cache, 800 megahertz FSB. Uh, so that will be quite nice. Uh, and Core 2 Duo E8580, sorry, E8580. Uh, Core 2 Duo uh, 3.16 uh, gigahertz, so that will be quite nice. Uh, six megabytes cache, 100, 1,000, uh, sorry, 1,333 uh, megahertz front side bus. So yeah, yeah. So I got a few parts and things we need to test, heap of cables and things like that. Uh, but what's really cool is um, what else I've found as well. So I go and grab the other parts because I just fired them in that box there to bring them home. All right, next part is this five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Uh, it's a Chinon uh, drive. There is the model number. FR506. Um, so I believe this is a part of a whole system. So once again with that other drive, which is a Chinon as well, the uh, five and a um, quarter inch floppy disk uh, drive is a part of the set. So we'll definitely have to clean that up and give that a try. Other parts I found are this Gold Star Multi IO um, controller card. It's just a standard Gold Star Prime uh, 2 chipset there. A serial parallel on the back, IDE, floppy disk, and um, COM2. It's got some jumpers. Uh, I don't know if there's a model. There seems to be a model here. Looks to be a model. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. So, a little dusty. All these parts are dusty. Um, but yeah, I have to give that a try. Uh, speaking of dusty, um, I found a ISA VGA card. Uh, it's the Trident, uh, it's got a chipset of TVGA 9000B, it's a very standard uh, VGA chipset. It's got some memory here, and a strange package, uh, VGA connector there. Um, yeah, standard VGA card, so to give these a try as well. Alright, but the real stars of the shows are the motherboards. So I found this uh, at a pile. Um, it's a socket 775. Um, yep, there it is, LGA 775. Gigabyte motherboard. 
Uh, model number is GAEP43DS3. So I'll go and look at the spec sheet on that. Uh, but yeah, got uh, quite a few memory slots for. Um, it's quite interesting being a socket 775 uh, machine supporting um, FSBs up to 6100 overclocked DDR2. Um, I've got some memory that will work in this actually, so I have to test this out. Um, it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. I mean, I know it's dusty, but the socket uh, itself, let me zoom in here, um, doesn't appear to have any damaged pins. There's the IO, built in Ethernet, lots of USBs, no USB 3 on this one. Uh, looks like it has onboard sound, will be some crappy Realtek thing, but it's all complete. Uh, it doesn't look damaged or burnt out or anything, so yeah, IDE there, floppy disk. M multiple SATA ports, quite a nice um, motherboard. There's a stand off here that I'll have to get rid of, but yeah, I mean it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. All right. And um, this is what I was most excited about actually. Um, it's a 286 motherboard. Uh, yes, it has a leaking VATA battery, so we'll have to check that out, see what's going on there. Um, but yeah, um, I think this board with the cards and the drives back there, um, we're in a machine, so it would have been cool to see what sort of machine this was in. I don't know much about 286 motherboards, I see it's got a bunch of tantalum capacitors, so uh, those like to explode. Uh, it's PC chips, um, chipset, um, what else has it got on here? Uh, looks like, I think it's a 10 uh, megahertz uh, CPU. Brighten that up a bit. I believe it's uh, 10 megahertz could be wrong the crystal oscillator here uh, is 20 megahertz so I guess divide that by 2 um, should be about 10 it's got lots of memory on board you can see here which I don't have any spares of um, I know very, very little about the 286 platform, so this would be the oldest uh, motherboard that I've ever used. Yeah, with all of that, um, all the stuff shown here, we'll um, get out some test machines and stuff, and um, let's see what works and what doesn't. All right, for testing some of these parts, we need a machine, so I've got my 386 computer. And I think the first thing I will test is this Trident card. I did try and um, just blow it with a uh, computer vacuum and a little brush. Uh, the only thing that worries me with all of these parts typically is these tantalum capacitors because when they fail they tend to just uh, explode. Uh, so what I'm going to do is read the values off these. Uh, C225, whatever that is, doesn't say anything else, and this is C225 as well, so um, they don't appear to have any standard values, so um, yeah, I guess we're just going to risk it. So what we'll do is I'll grab a screwdriver, uh, let's fit this card into... Uh, this known good working machine and test it. Uh, no, this is not a LTT screwdriver, this is a Xiaomi. Alright. Let's see if I can sneak this past. So, this is another Trident card, and I believe. Yeah, exactly the same uh, chipset. From what I understand, these are not exactly great ISA cards, but hey, if it works, sweet. 
All right, I'm not even going to bother screwing that in. All right, set up, plugged in, see what happens. Cool, Trident VGA 512 meg. Sweet, that VGA card uh, works. It's always good to test with a known um, good machine. Now I am going to put my original car back in just because I want to leave this uh, machine um, how it is. Um, but yeah, let's test the um, multi IO card next. Get my OG um, controller card out here. Uh, might be easier to have removed these ribbon cables uh, before taking that out. Right, so that's my, uh, it's like an Acer all-in-one jobbo. Uh, once again, there's a couple of electrolytics uh, on this one, but yeah, God, that's about how you're doing I, over there. That capacitor's just a little bit weird, off-centered. Um, yeah, once again, some ceramics. Uh, I think they're ceramic capacitors. They look like ceramic capacitors. They just say like 104, 104. 104, yeah, they're all, uh, all of these are saying 104 on them. Uh, a bit dusty, I think I'm gonna go outside and give it a clean, but overall, uh, looks to be intact. No big gouges or anything. All right, get this uh, in here. I think uh, we'll do the IDE. Uh, pin one is bottom left. So we have to remember that. Oh, that's a bit bent there. I'll straighten that up. A pair of pin nose pliers. Um, or just use my old school uh, technique just to go in there and just straighten that up a little bit. So I don't often need too much, just enough just to um, plug in. Not too bad though. All right, a floppy disk. Going in, and then um, hard drive. A little bit awkward to get in there, but not too bad. All right, we'll lower the lid down and we'll power it up. Oh, helps if I plug my screen in. There we go. Hey, look at that. Booting up literally straight away. Couldn't ask anything better. Uh, cool, now that those um, parts are tested good, I'm gonna test the um, floppy disk drives that I've got. And clean them up and see how they go.
Is he right there? <laughs> oh. Drop in the uh, Core 2 Duo uh, SLB9K, which is the E8500. Giving the motherboard a bit of a uh, dusting. Uh, this supports um, CPUs up to the uh, Quad Core Extreme, I believe, which is quite cool. So I have to see one day if I can get one of those. Connect up some things. Just going to use a basic um, VGA card because I know it works. I've got this. Um, Nice pair of uh, Corsair DDR2 modules, so maybe we'll fit them in. I can't recall though if I have tested these, but I guess we're going to find out if they work. I got a standard uh, posting card. So I can see any BIOS codes. All right. And the only other thing we need is a power switch. Let's see what happens. It's going to keep my um, hand over the power button just in case. Oh, we're doing a boot loop. It might be just a self recognition thing. Not a good sign. Doesn't appear to be executing codes. Okay, I'll let the capacitors drain. Um, there is no CMOS battery. Could be the memory. So, you know what? Let's take the memory out. And we should hear beeping if there's a problem okay I'm just gonna go ahead and try and fit one of these other random modules that I've got here could have bad contacts as well you never quite know Hey, we have post. Look at that. So unfortunately, either these are not... Hmm, maybe one of these is dead. I got these from the recycling center as well. Let's give it another try. Uh, there we go. Seems to be working. Uh, 
uh, four gigabytes of memory. Jeez, it seems pretty um, loaded here. Got a lot of overclocking stuff. Here's our three gigahertz CPU. Uh, XMP profile. Wow, it's quite um, quite advanced. How's our CPU temp? Because that cooler, I bet, not actually right. 30 degrees, of course, no overclock or load. Yeah, sweet. We have a working, well, haven't booted into Windows uh, motherboard. All right, the very first thing I need to do with this board is uh, let's um, clip this battery if I can get in here. I might have to turn this around. Could try and unsolder it, but I think if I literally just come in here and just get it off the the board. I'm trying to be careful because these pliers are very sharp. There we go, and I don't want to like dig into the traces. things are um, terrible Ugh. yep she's gone to crusty town all right looking at some of the traces here uh, there's a few that are going to need repairs so what I'm going to do just for testing is let's tone uh, some of them out yeah, it's looking bad, eh? Um, like this one that goes... Here. And that one's still good. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to uh, scrub this down a little. Alright, because I'm a big chicken, I've got this uh, sitting outside. Um, I have checked it for shorts, but uh, you never know, so here we go. Okay, it posted. Not doing much on the postcard screen. Um, well, the good news is it didn't explode. The bad news is no postcodes. I believe this board should support postcodes. I'll plug it back in so you can, and we can see if there was just a. Like it's trying. Unless it has booted, and I just can't tell. Right, what I'm going to do is bring it back inside. And we'll set it up. Alright. So I brought it inside. I've plugged a VGA card into it. Let's see what it does. Holy crap, it's posting. Wow. Uh, I, I was not expecting that to work at all. 0742 error. Well, hey, uh, it's better than nothing. Um, what I'll do... I'll let it settle down. Maybe it's looking for that hard drive controller uh, that was in it. So, you know what? I'm just gonna go for broke here. Might as well put it in. And 
and um, let's see uh, what it does. I, I will be honest, I wasn't expecting it to um, post at all. Keyboard's not working with numlock or anything, so machine's definitely locked up. Um, I'm going to bet that we've got some open traces that need to be addressed. Well, um, yeah, other than that, um, that's a good sign, uh, the board posts, so I think we'll leave it at that and come back to this um, motherboard in a future project because I think it'd be really cool um, to um, get it going again. Um, but yeah, other than that, I just really wanted to have a look at some of the parts I found and see if any of them work. Some of them do. Actually, pretty much everything I've tested seems to work in some form of capacity. I know this one's, you know, three-legged horse as such, but um, I think with a little bit of work, um, we can revive it. All right, sorry for the... Um, overexposed um, camera um, but yeah particularly troublesome areas such as here all of these along here um, so what I'm going to need to do on I mean, then there's this main power feed but I can turn that one out um, I think I need to remove this header and lift these diodes out of place uh, to get to the traces that run uh, underneath it um, and then that's going to need a repair uh, I will be honest I'm a little bit out of my depth with um, 286 stuff uh, so yeah that, that'll be fun and the other thing I wouldn't mind doing is just getting rid of these tantalum uh, capacitors I know they're fine now but I don't like it when they explode, and plus when they explode you can't read the values, but yeah. Alright everyone, I'll uh, leave you to your weekend or week, um, whenever I manage to get, get this video edited, and um, yeah. Thanks for um, joining me and having a look at some of the um, parts I picked up. Alrighty, bye for now.